I'd like to introduce to you now Coach Sam Barner. Coach Barner has been an assistant strength coach at Clemson University, a head strength coach at the University of Utah, and most recently the strength and conditioning coach for the United States C team. He is now present with Bigger, Faster, Stronger, and Coach Barner has specialized his unique ability in developing a seven-point sprint technique system. Coach Barner. Glad to have you aboard. Hello, Dr. Shepard. It's great to be here. It's great to be with Bigger, Faster, Stronger. My primary goal is to help young athletes succeed, and my area that I think that I can help is a speed technique. Now, what I've done over the past seven to eight years, I've evaluated a lot of programs, done a lot of research, and I've come up with a seven-point sprint technique system. These seven simple points will help you improve your speed. Uh, they're based on fact, and they're basically involving biomechanics of the body. And what I'll do now is I'll just go from head to toe. What we call it is a two, two, three system, which adds up to, to seven. Okay, the first two points involve the head. Okay, the point number one, and we call this eyes. Okay, for example, when you run, your eyes are focusing center, horizontal level. Okay, we call that a one word vocabulary and we say eyes. Okay, number two is head tilt. It's not back or forward, it's straight ahead. Okay, the head is, hard, is perpendicular to the ground. Those are the first two points. Okay, the second two points are very important. Point number three, we call this shoulder. Most of the problems with sprinting is too much arm action, the bending of the elbow. You lose speed with this motion. The motion of the arm is locked, actually. A 90 degree angle to the full motion of the shoulder. So we call this shoulder. If you'll see here, the shoulder comes back. The hand doesn't stop here. It goes all the way back here. This extra inch right here will give you more speed on the lift portion here. For every action, there is a reaction, Newton's law. This applies here. The force back here of the elbow and shoulder gives you more force through here, thus improving your stride, okay? That's point number three, and that's called shoulder, okay? Now, the hand should go across the hip area, not across the waist. This action here produces an upward shoulder motion therefore losing energy, losing speed. You want to come across the hip area. So now we have three points. We have the eyes, we have the head, and we have the shoulder. Point number three is called back, okay, back. Most people run with a lean, okay? You want to run with an upright back position. The back should be evenly placed, centered over the pelvis. This gives you more speed. It gives you better angle in foot plant and drive. So back is our fourth point, okay? Point number five in, involves the leg. It is very important to have knee lift. Knee lift with great speed will allow you to get speed going into the stride. This is not a high knee lift because you lose energy in this motion. The knee comes up with the leg hanging down at a basically 90 degree angle. This is efficient for speed. Now, the fifth point is very important, lift. Lift is our fifth point. Number six is our plant. Most people who run do too much foreleg. In other words, this motion here, going forward and over the knee. You lose an angle from here to here, opening an angle too wide. You wanna go here, lift, plant back. The plant is delivered basically right under the pelvis. That's point number six. Now the point, now point seven is a very, very important point. Probably 90% of the people negate this. As you follow through, most people do not extend this knee. That's our point seven. It's called extend. It's an action, a vigorous action like this, a hyperextension of the knee. Most people will go through this motion here, pulling out prematurely, losing precious inches on their stride. So now, those are seven simple points that can help you improve your speed. And I'll go through them one more time. Point number one, eyes. 
Eyes are horizontal to the ground. Point number two, head tilt. Head tilt or head. The head is perpendicular to the ground, straight up and down. Point number three is shoulder. Shoulder here, 90 degree angle of the arm, shoulder. The key is the pop past the, the hip area here, okay? The next point is back. The back is arched straight up and down once you get into stride, and that's called back, okay? The next point is lift, lift of the knee, lift of the, of the knee, okay? Point number six is plant. The plant has to be directly under the pelvis. The last point, point number seven, is extension. So you have lift, plant, and extension all the way in the knee area. So those are several, uh, seven simple points that will help you improve your speed. Now practicing these techniques should only be done twice a week. You have to start at half speed practicing the point and then go three quarter speed and then full speed. Let me recommend that you only try to practice one point per sprint. It's very difficult to practice more than one point uh, for a sprint because you have to concentrate on so many things. So those are seven simple points running twice a week, about 30 to 80 yards, about half speed, working up to, to three quarter speed and then full speed. We will now analyze the running form of several high school athletes and Stefan Fernholm, the world's fastest big man in relation to the seven point speed technique system. We have Dale Pike, now who will be a junior in high school next fall. Next, we have Brett Mullen, who will also be a junior in high school next fall. And now Brian Moore, who was a first team All-State running back, will be a freshman at Southern Utah State College this next fall. Next, we have Bill Klikas, who was a first team All-State High School football player last fall and will be a freshman at Southern Utah State College this fall. And now Stefan Fernholm. Now that you've had a chance to view all five of our athletes, we'll now do a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the seven-point technique system. Stefan, can you comment on Dale's form? Well, as we see here, uh, Dale is losing a lot of energy going out to the sides here. He's bringing his elbow out and his arm is going way out, and also his head is tilted to the side. And if we look at his uh, right foot, pointing outwards and not in the running direction and those are some uh, big problems and if you correct those he could uh, drastically improve his 40 yard time. Yes, to, uh, to a analyze this athlete's running form more specifically with our seven point system uh, I'll start with the head. If you notice the head is tilted to the left uh, which will waste a lot of energy. Uh, also the eyes, it's hard to tell from this picture but the eyes need to be fixed in a more horizontal plane. Uh, the back, it's hard to tell from this angle, but the back is not arched. He's leaning forward, which causes this athlete to uh, displace a lot of energy forward. Uh, also, the shoulders, uh, it's hard to tell from this angle, but it looks like there are 90 degrees in the elbow area, but the left arm is out too far from the torso area, which will waste a lot of energy in that area. Uh, the hand is not whipping back like it's supposed to. It's more in a frozen position. This athlete needs to relax in that area. Uh, also, if you notice the, the leg, the left leg is, is raised up, but it's across the body. It's at an angle uh, in front of where the athlete is running, so he is losing energy. He should make sure that this leg raises uh, horizontally and plants horizontally uh, forward. And if you'll notice the right foot where it's planted on the floor, it's at an angle of where the athlete is running. It should be a straight up and down motion uh, front and back. Uh, this foot here is a, at a crisscrossed angle. So if you analyze these points here using our point system, then you can easily see where this athlete can improve. 
Brett is the fastest athlete on his high school football team. Can we help him, Stefan? Oh, definitely. As we saw here, uh, when he was running, he was very, very tight in his head. And uh, he's tightening up his neck, and he's losing a lot of energy that way. And also, as we can see here, uh, his left foot is pointing out. His toes are pointing out again, just as uh, we had in this other uh, freeze frame before here. And uh, that causes the knee to go out, and he's not in the most powerful position he could be. Knee should be straight ahead. So should the foot be. And uh, I think he's overall very tight. Utilizing the uh, point system again here, we can easily evaluate him from head to toe. As, as Stefan mentioned, his head is very tight. This causing his head to tilt back. One way to alleviate this problem, a good rule of thumb to use, is try to relax the jaw muscles. When you relax the jaw and the jaw muscles, usually the head and neck will follow, follow through and relax also. Uh, one thing good to point out about his shoulders is from this angle, they do look uh, at to be about 90 degrees, which is where you want to be. Uh, also, commenting on the the feet and, and the feet and the foot plant there is uh, it's going out to the side rather than straight ahead, which causes us to lose a lot of energy. Now, if we noticed in the frame before, the same foot plant was noticed, and one reason that causes this is a lack of flexibility in the Achilles area. If you're more flexible in the, the Achilles or the back of the foot, then you are more apt to place the foot straight ahead as opposed to out to the side. As an all-state football player, Brian was one of the fastest athletes in the state. Stefan, is there a reason for that? Yes, we can see here, uh, he's uh, showing here a nice running stride. Both his feet are pointing straight ahead, and his arm is up nice, and uh, his head is staying relaxed. The only thing that I really can see here uh, is his uh, left arm is moving just a little bit to the outside, and maybe his knee could be a touch higher. That's hard to tell from this angle, though. We'll be able to see that from, from the side view a little bit better. That looks real good. Bill will be a Division Three lineman next fall. Coach Varner, could you comment on Bill's technique? Yes, uh, as we go from head to toe again in his situation, notice that the head is definitely pointed down, looking down. That should be looking straight ahead in an upright position. The shoulders, uh, it's hard to tell from this angle, but the shoulders and elbows break the angle. Uh, the elbow on the right side is opening up, causing a, a greater than 90 degree angle, which you lose energy. If you notice, both arms are in, in a sense, and they're not off to the side, pointing in a straight angle, which he's definitely losing energy there. Uh, he's rounded in the back, as you can, it, you can see from this angle. Also, the hips are kind of rolled in, and that's due to the fact to where the foot is placed. If you notice, the foot is at an angle pointing out, not straight ahead. Uh, just this small difference right here causes the whole body to be out of line, as you can notice from the hips all the way up to the head. Oh, watching myself run here brings tears to my eyes, guys. <laughs> Give me a break. Sam, what do you think? Well, I hate to say it, but uh, Stefan does have very good form. Uh, if you'll start from the head and go down, you'll notice that the head is in a, is in a great position. It's steady and it's, it's straight ahead, just like uh, you want your athletes to run. Uh, the shoulders have a good vigorous motion, uh, front and back. The elbows look to be in a, in a really good uh, angle. It's hard to tell from this position, this, uh, position though. Uh, he is in an upright position. Back is arched, which is where you want to be. The leg lift is really good. Uh, you have to have proper leg lift to give you a, a, an efficient foot plant there. And you notice his feet are in a straight angle. They're not deviating to the right or left, which is where you want to be. Uh, as a whole, this, this running stride looks really good, Stefan. Thanks, Sam. Looking at Dell from the side view, it's a lot easier to see some of the angles involved in running. First off, the head is not upright. He is leaning back. Secondly, his back should be upright. In his situation, he is leaning forward. This causes the hips to rotate back, thus he loses power. If you look at his leg, particularly the front leg and knee, the angle should be around 90 degrees. If you'll notice, Dale has a, 90, has a 135 degree angle. He loses power because he's planting his foot too far in front of the body. Here we see Brett running from the side view, and this position he's in right now, 
a pretty good position. His right leg is extended, extended fully and his left knee is lifted up. And uh, the only real problem I can see here is his shoulders are uh, fairly high up and that indicates that he's tightening up his upper body and also his neck. You can see the head is tilted backwards indicating a tight neck and a tight upper body which would uh, make him lose a lot of power. And also maybe his hip is running a touch low and that, uh, that might be uh, due to the fact that he's planting his foot ahead of himself. He needs to plant the foot right under the hip like we mentioned before here. If you see Brian here in the lateral view, you'll see that his head is in an upright position. His shoulders are in a fairly good relaxed position, which is where you want to be. The thing you want to take note in his situation is the angle of his rear elbow. It is fixed in an approximately 90 degrees. This is very ideal for running form. His wrist is rotated back in a whip manner. This is very good to note. The best aspect of his lateral view is noticing the rear knee. He is in a fully extended position. This is where the athlete can derive great speed. The problem that he needs to work on is in his foreleg. He is reaching a bit too much before he plants his foot. Now, this position that Bill hits right here is uh, not a very good one. He's very cramped up. As you can see, his arms are very close together. He's not getting the full pendulum effect from, from his arms and uh, also his knees are very close together showing that he did, he did not get a full extension from his, uh, his left leg. Also his foreleg uh, on the right side is extended way too much and he's also about to plant his foot flat on the ground. That's something that you do not want to do. Now these two problems here that I mentioned last, his foot being planted flat and his foreleg being too far extended is going to cause his hip to run very low. And the other problem that I can see here is, like we mentioned before when we saw Bill earlier, is his uh, shoulders and his head. He's very tight and he's looking down. He needs to relax a lot more in his upper body. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, present the basic starting technique here. And we're going to start explaining this technique by starting at the hands. As you can see in this picture here, I'm up on my fingertips. And uh, let's go on to the body here, climb up a little bit along the arms and we find the head there and uh, as you can see the head is I'm looking down I'm not looking up and there's a reason for that if you look up you have a tendency to tighten up your neck muscles and as we've been saying over and over in this video we need to stay relaxed in the neck and the head now the angles that, that you would like to achieve in your legs is uh, approximately 90 degree for your foreleg and approximately 135 degree for your hind leg and we have some simple guidelines to achieve these angles here and that's placing the first foot approximately one foot behind the fingertips and the hind leg approximately one foot behind the toes of the first foot now these are approximate uh, measurements and you can vary those to, to fit you the best a neat little trick here for improving your 40 yard time is also leaning forward as far possible on your fingertips thereby shifting the weight forward and actually changing point of gravity maybe as far as a foot forward. And also you see in this picture here my hip is higher than my shoulders and this is also a must for, for a good start. A lot of high school kids tend to stand straight up in their start when they run 40 yards or whatever they run and this is a big mistake that they do because they need to transfer that momentum that they got going very slowly and gradually. They should not be upright until they have reached their maximum speed. So we need to stay down until we're running at a full speed. And that usually takes anywhere from 15 to 20 yards. As you can see from this lateral position, Stefan is completely relaxed, particularly in the shoulder area. His head is upright, but pay particular attention to where his right or his front foot places on the ground it is directly under the hip which is where you want to plant your foreleg. In conclusion, to summarize our bigger, faster, stronger sprint technique system, we need to know the following. The head should be upright, the eye should be fixed looking straight ahead, the back should be upright and slightly arched, the shoulders should rotate vigorously, 
with the elbows fixed in a 90 degree angle. The wrists should simulate a whip action as the shoulder rotates back. The initial leg action is to lift forward, not up. The lower leg should hang before planting. The feet should make the initial plant directly under the hips and not out in front of the body. On the follow through or end of the leg drive, the knee should fully extend. If you follow these points closely, then you can definitely improve your speed. Improving your running speed is essential for most sports. And uh, we have some guidelines here that uh, might help you in, in the way you think about uh, how you want to improve your running speed. And we like to take a comparison to compare an athlete to a car. And uh, what we first do in uh, trying to improve our speed here is we try to get the power that will enable us to run fast. And that is the same as in a car, improving the power of the engine. That would be the horsepower. And then we would like to transfer as much of that power from the engine to the rear wheels and down to the ground. It's the same as an athlete trying to transfer that squat power he has down to the ground through his feet. Okay, and in the car, that transfer goes by the drive line. The less friction, the more efficient drive line you have in a car, the faster that car is going to run because he is, it's a more efficient machine. The same as for an athlete, the more flexible that athlete is, the less power is going to go lost in his joint when he's trying to perform a running stride. Okay, and from there on, we can go to the efficiency of, of the total machine in the car here, and we can calculate how many horsepowers per pound that car has, where will bring us into something we call a power to weight ratio here. Now, the more horsepower, the more power per pound we have, the faster that car is going to be. And the same is true for an athlete in one way. The stronger that athlete is, okay, and the less he weighs, the faster he has a potential for running. If he has all these other things we're, we're, we're going to be talking about here too, if he ties that in, he has the potential for being very fast with a lot of strength and little weight. Okay, it's something we call power to weight ratio. Don't forget that. And then if we have these three very important things here now, we need to tie those in and perform a good running stride. And we can't do that unless we practice our technique. Okay? We need to be running. We need to be running very, at a very, very high intensity level. We need to think about our technique. Because the technique we perform is going to be part of how, how efficient we are, okay? how well we plan our foot, and how relaxed we are in the rest of our body that's not working so hard. So technique is a very, very important part of this uh, with running fast. And that would be the same for, say, we race a sports car 40 yards. If the guy can't keep a straight line, his time is not going to be as fast. He's not as efficient. Stefan, most, uh, I know college football coaches would really not believe your 40-yard dash time. And your speed is so incredible. Could you tell us uh, more specifically what are some of the best weight training exercises to do for speed development? Well, first I want to comment on that, me being so incredible. I, I don't agree on that. Like, you know, I have a lot of friends that can do almost the same thing. What country are they from? They're from Sweden. Oh, so, okay. okay. So. so I just think that it's very achievable. It's not nothing really incredible, okay? For me, I, I think I could do even better than what I have been doing. And I've seen some of my friends that, that you don't even know yet over in Sweden done almost the same thing. So I wanted to, to make everybody realize that it's, it's attainable. So what you're saying, if, if, if if coaches and athletes will follow these guidelines that we're presenting on this video, they should be able to improve their 40-yard dash time considerably. Oh, definitely. Now, it used to be thought that speed was, you were born with speed and you couldn't improve it. You could not improve it. Well, it's, it's true in a sense, though, but you, it's like your muscle can only contract so fast, okay? But then we're getting into something more complicated, but you, you still can improve your, your running speed tremendously. I mean, we're talking time. Maybe double it, yes. Yes. All right, let's get back to the, uh, the weight training exercises then. Okay, we're talking about weight training exercises for running speed, right? I got a couple of favorites here, and uh, the king of exercise, of course, which is the squat. I like to now do a lot. Now, that's the parallel squat? Yes, the parallel squat. And uh, then we have to bring in the clean because of its, uh, the, way, the way that exercise is done hits the muscle that you use running very well. And also the straight leg deadlift. And I would take these three as my, my favorite for increasing your your potential for running speed. Now the straight leg deadlift, uh, we demonstrate that on our another video called the core lift, but could you, uh, that's kind of a, an unheard of uh, 
exercise in this country as far as speed development. Could you tell us a little more about this, the straight leg deadlift? Why, why would that help your speed? Okay, well, if we want to get into that, uh, the straight leg deadlift here is uh, basically for uh, hamstring strength. Okay, your hamstring is very much involved in, in your running stride and, and how fast you're going to run. You know, it depends on how strong your hamstring is to, to, to a great deal. And uh, well, the favorite exercise for, uh, ham for the hamstring used to be the, ham the leg curl. I, well, it is in this country, but yeah. you're saying the leg curl is not as good as a straight leg deadlift? Well, if you really think about it, the hamstring works over two joints, the knee joint and the hip joint. Okay? And the joint that is really involved, powerfully involved in running is the hip joint. You know we talk about the hip joint all the time and hip power and pop that hip. Okay? Now, the hamstring will actually bring the hip forward. It's actually, the, ha the hamstring is moving the whole leg, the knee, the whole, the whole leg, the foot. It's bringing, you know, it's bringing the leg back and the hip forward. Okay, and that's the, actually the upper part of the hamstring. And that works a, a lot different than when you, when you actually just use the hamstring for, for the knee joint and just bringing it up like in a, in a leg curl. Okay, and that's what the straight leg deadlift, it will work on the hamstring through the hip joint. I see. Okay, and that is uh, maybe one of the reasons why so many uh, runners, football players, pull a hamstring because they are doing hamstring curls for their hamstring strength when they should be doing straight leg deadlifts. Now, should you be, should I be going for maxes and really heavy on this, or, or, or do I control the the weight a little bit? Yeah, we keep the weight down, and we got a guideline here. We say never exceed 40 percent of your uh, maximum squat parallel squat so in the I, straight leg deadlift. So if I have a max of 500 on the parallel squat, then at 40% of that would be like 200 pounds? 200 pounds, yes. I and that's the maximum, no. And that should be fairly easy to do. Yes, it should, it should never be hard to do that. You should do it slow so that you do get the, the contraction in the muscle over a long period of time, and, and that way you know, tiring out the muscle and then gaining muscular strength that way. Now sets and reps? I would recommend three times 10. Three sets of 10? Yes. All right, now, so we're gonna do our weight training exercises we're going to do a correct flexibility movement. Now, how can we improve our form? Uh, I had an idea of video analyzation. In other words, we take pictures, video of, of people running, and then analyze their form. How do you, you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I think that it's a good idea, though, even though you should not overdo that, because there's so much information that the athlete gets by watching himself run, and so many things are probably wrong with this running stride. So he needs to pick out a few a few things that he'd like to work on and work on those maybe for a month, month and a half, maybe even two months, and then come back and do another video annotation and see if he's been correcting those, maybe pick up another couple of points and then go on from there. How many times a week should you work on your speed? I think you should work on it twice a week. And then about how long of a period? Oh, I would say 30 to 40 minutes should be, should be plenty. All right. now. If I want to improve my speed, should I be working on, I mean, is it all right to run a, a couple miles, or, or should I just be more specific and run 10-yard, uh, 20, 40-yard sprints? What, what is best for speed development? Well, it's a, you know, it kind of depends on what position you're playing, but in, a general rule here would be you know, running maybe 20 yarders up to 60 yarders for, for most football players, and run maybe a total of anywhere from two to 300 yards total. When I split up, that could be like 520s and 540s and so on, depending on what you want to concentrate on. Now, we also believe that bigger, faster, stronger is very important for a coach to time his athletes twice a month. And the reason we're saying this, to time them so often, is because that player, that athlete, needs to have positive feedback. He needs to know that all the hard work he's doing on his squats, on his clean on his straight leg deadlift, the everyday flexibility routine that he's going through, his visual uh, analyzation through watching a video of him, his technique work, his form running, his, his actual speed work that he's doing twice a week, that these are actually paying big dividends. And if we just wait and time a guy once a year, we really don't have the opportunity that we have to, to work on positive feedback. And I think he'll improve his his 40 and his speed if we do it on a continual basis twice a month. 